What is going on guys? In this video, I'm going to talk to you about identity and access management, also known as IAM on Amazon Web Services. So IAM is an extremely important concept that you're going to be using regularly all across AWS. So it's critical to have a solid understanding of how it works. So let's jump right into it and first talk about what exactly IAM is. So as the name implies, IAM is a permission system that regulates access to AWS resources. So really it helps you as the administrator define who can access what on an AWS account. Secondly, IAM users allow you to assign broad or specific permissions to groups of users or even specific ones. Broad permissions could include things like providing access to an entire AWS service, such as DynamoDB, whereas specific permissions could include fine grain access to a particular S3 bucket to perform read and write operations. Third, IAM provides a mechanism to monitor and audit access to specific resources by enabling AWS CloudTrail. And finally, for those of you that are in large organizations with existing identity technologies, you'll be pleased to know that AWS IAM can easily integrate with them. So that's a high level overview of what IAM is. So let's move on to how it works. So there's four key concepts that you need to be aware of when using IAM. There are users, groups, roles, and policies slash permissions. Policies being the official name, but I do sometimes refer to them as permissions. So let's go through each of these one by one. So users refer to specific individuals and using IAM, you can grant each user a login and password so they can access the AWS console on their own, although they'll have a limited set of permissions that you define. Users also have secret keys and secret access keys, which are used as inputs when setting up clients in your application level code. Then there's groups, which simply refer to a collection of users with a common theme. An example could be intern students and senior developers. Obviously, we want intern students to have a very different set of permissions than a senior developer. And third, there are roles which act as a collection of policies. For example, you can define a role that has both database read and database write permissions to a specific AWS DynamoDB table. Roles have a slight nuance in that they're typically not directly tied to individual users and are meant to be assumed by anyone who needs it. For instance, you can use roles to allow users within a different AWS account to access one of your DynamoDB tables by creating a role with the right permissions and then granting them the ability to assume or use that role. And finally, there are policies, which really are the bread and butter of IAM. These things define the specific low level permissions for access to AWS resources. And there's two variations to these. There's either allow or deny. So you can allow or deny permissions to resources. So here's an example of what a policy looks like in JSON format. So if we take a look at this a little closer, we have a version, a statement, and this is really where the meat of the policy is. Uh, we have a SID, which stands for statement ID. This can be anything. We have an effect, and that is allow in this case. So that can either be allow or deny. We have an action, and these are the specific permissions that we want to permit. So we have a DynamoDB scan, and we have a DynamoDB query. So these two permissions are what are allowed with this policy. We also have another factor here, which is resource. And in this example, we are providing a specific AWS resource. So this policy or this permission only provides users the scan and query operations on this specific table. Now, optionally, you can put a wildcard in here, which is a star, and this would give the user that is using this policy access to all DynamoDB tables. Okay, so that's a little bit about how IAM works. Let's move on now to a practical example about how an organization may set up IAM. Alrighty, so in this example, we're working with one group, a group of intern students. And we have three users that we've defined, John, Mary, and Stephen. Now, Mary and Stephen are intern students. So like I was alluding to before, we want to give them fewer or more restrictive permissions than other users. So say we have two policies now. So we have a DynamoDB basic write, which gives us the ability to perform a put item operation on a specific table. 
And then we have a DynamoDB basic read, which gives us the query and get item permissions also on this table. So in this example, we want to associate this group with the DynamoDB basic read permissions to give Mary and Steven access to this DynamoDB table. And that's something that's very simple to do in the AWS console. You just go to the group section and add a policy and select this policy that has the permissions that you need. Now, what about John who's left all alone? Now, John wants to access this table as well. He wants to access the put item and the query and get item API. So how can we do this? Well, we can create a DynamoDB read or write role. And with that role, we can associate these two policies with it. So now anyone that is using this role will have access to these resources and these specific API endpoints. So when we go to the user section for John, we can grant him this DynamoDB role. In doing so, giving him access to this table for the put item and the query and get item APIs. So that's a pretty simple example of how you may set this up in an organization. Now, hopefully that made sense. So let's move on to best practices when using IAM. And there's two big ones that I can think of. And the first and absolutely most important, bolded and underlined is to use the least privilege model. So this means to only give users the minimum set of permissions they need to perform their task. Don't go ahead and give folks too much permissions because it can lead to security vulnerabilities or some folks accidentally deleting production database tables. And I'm really stressing this because this has happened to me before. So please, 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 please use the least privilege model. And secondly, please exercise caution when modifying existing policies. This is something that has been me in the past as well. And it's very, very easy to modify a policy thinking it's safe to do so, and then find out one of your production applications was using that policy and suddenly lost access to a resource. So just be careful when modifying production IAM configuration. So if you enjoyed this video, I have many more on AWS topics on my channel. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on next week's video. Thanks so much, folks, and I'll see you next time.